Hello folks, time to talk about a new reaction type. This is going to be precipitation reactions. The rule with a precipitation reaction is we take two electrolyte reactants and when they react they have to make at least one non-electrolyte product. For our purposes we're going to identify electrolytes or non-electrolytes using a solubility table like the one I gave you in your notebook. Here's an example of a potential precipitation reaction right here. We have sodium sulfate and barium nitrate. Both of these are water-soluble materials, and I've indicated that by labeling each as aqueous. So will this make a successful precipitation reaction? Well, here's how we figure that out. We needed to predict what products could be made by mixing these two electrolytes. To do that, we have to see what type of cation and what type of anion is present in each of these reactants. Looking at sodium sulfate, we see our cation here is Na1+. Our anion is the familiar sulfate, SO4-2-. So that is the type of cation and the type of anion we have in sodium sulfate. And notice I haven't made any attempt to balance this. We did need two sodiums to balance out the two negative charges on the sulfate. That's why sodium sulfate has the formula Na2SO4. But for right now, I just want to see what type of cation and what type of anion is present. I'm going to do the same thing with our second reactant. So our cation and barium nitrate is barium 2+. Plus. The anion here is our familiar nitrate, NO3-1-. And just like I did with sodium sulfate, I haven't made an attempt to balance the charges here. That was done in the original formula. I just want to see what type of cation and what type of anion we have present. Now what we need to do is switch partners. So the sodium, which was initially paired with the sulfate, is now going to be paired with the nitrate. And the barium, which was paired with the nitrate, is now going to be paired with the sulfate. Now that we have these new combinations, we need to make reasonable, balanced chemical formulas for them. So if we have Na plus and NO3 minus, we need to have a net charge of zero here. So all we need is one of each ion. So NaNO3 is a valid formula. That is sodium nitrate. Our next combination is barium 2 plus and sulfate. And they, again, go together one to one with a net charge of zero. So we've made two potential products here, sodium nitrate and barium sulfate. Now that we've predicted our products, we can then go balance the equation. Notice we actually had two sodiums and two nitrates in our reactants, so we will in fact make two sodium nitrates. We had one barium and one sulfate, we will make one barium sulfate. And now, finally, for the moment of truth, precipitation reactions will only work if two electrolyte water-soluble reactants give us at least one non-electrolyte product. Consulting our solubility table, we see that sodium nitrate here is water-soluble by virtue of having an alkali group 1 metal cation and also the fact that it's a nitrate. Since sodium nitrate is water-soluble, we will label it aqueous. What about barium sulfate, though? Most sulfates are water-soluble, but you'll notice that barium sulfate is one of the few exceptions. So barium sulfate is not water-soluble. It will not form an aqueous solution. It will become a solid. And that solid indicates it's a non-electrolyte. So what we see here is a successful precipitation reaction. If you mix sodium sulfate solution with barium nitrate solution, you can expect to get sodium nitrate and barium sulfate. The barium sulfate will come out of solution as a powder and can be readily isolated with filtration. You can even get the sodium nitrate as well because once you filter out that barium sulfate, what is left, the filtrate, is simply going to be sodium nitrate dissolved in water. Evaporate that water, you get your sodium nitrate. So a successful precipitation reaction can actually be used to make either of the two products. Here we have our next example. So the next example consists of an iron 3 bromide solution mixed with a potassium carbonate solution. Will this be a successful precipitation reaction? Let's take a look. 
So looking at iron 3 bromide, we call it iron 3 bromide because the iron has a 3 plus charge. We know that because Br as an anion is typically going to have a 1 minus charge. And if we have three of them, that means that our iron has a 3 plus charge. But again, what we're looking for here for precipitation reactions and predicting the products is what type of cation and what type of anion we have. So our type of cation here is iron 3 plus. Our type of anion is Br minus. Our next reactant is potassium carbonate. That consists of a potassium cation and a carbonate anion. Now, of course, we need two potassiums to balance out that carbonate, but to predict products here, we just want to see what type of cation and what type of anion each reactant has. Well, now let's swap partners. So now the iron 3 plus is going to be paired with the carbonate. And the potassium is going to be paired with the Br minus. Now that we have our new ion combinations, let's make balanced chemical formulas. So iron 3 plus carbonate 2 minus. It's kind of tricky. The key here is the least common multiple between 3 and 2 is 6. So if we have two irons, we'll have a total of six positive charges. And if we have three carbonates, we'll have a total of six negative charges. And of course, since we have more than one carbonate here, we indicate that by enclosing it in parentheses. So what we've just formed here is iron three carbonate, and this is the proper formula with a net charge of zero. Our other potential product here is K plus and Br minus. They just go together one to one to make potassium bromide. So if this reaction is successful, these are the two potential products we can make. Well, now let's see if we can balance this equation. So we did need three carbonates. So that means we're going to need three potassium carbonates to supply those three carbonates. Well, we also need two irons. So we'll need two iron three bromides to supply those two irons. And what we have left is a total of six BRs and a total of six Ks. Therefore, we'll make six KBRs. And the equation is balanced. Now for the moment of truth, will this reaction actually work? Well, looking at your solubility chart, you'll see that most carbonates are insoluble, and iron three carbonate is not an exception. So our iron three carbonate will be a solid. Now be careful about that S. Some people think that S stands for soluble. It means the exact opposite, actually. S means solid. It means it's insoluble. If something is soluble, we indicate that with AQ for aqueous. Now what about our potassium bromide? Well, that is very much water soluble. But what we're left with here is a successful precipitation reaction. We mix two electrolyte reactants, iron 3 bromide and potassium carbonate, and we made two products, iron 3 carbonate and potassium bromide, one of which, the iron 3 carbonate, is a non-electrolyte. So this is a successful precipitation reaction. We could isolate this iron 3 carbonate through filtration, and the filtrate that passes through the filter paper will have the KBR dissolved in solution. We can evaporate the water and collect that as well. So a successful precipitation.